part 2 of the Robot Romance Marathon. If you want to know the history behind this trilogy, the people who made it, my background growing up with Super Robot Tizen, and how the robot genre is the mainstream anime in my country, then please check part 1 of the marathon, the Compatler V review, as I will make a lot of comparisons between the two. So, Voltus 5 is the second part of the Robot Romance, coming out in 1977, a year after the conclusion of Compatler V. As for the Laserdisc, there are single Laserdisc releases that came out in 1999 and a box set release which I don't know when it came out. And they have different jackets, they did not just compile the individual releases. They have the box set and it's nothing mind blowing or elegant like the Compatler V set I have. The jackets are decent, I like the sketch work to be fair here, but this deserved more love and attention. The individual releases are better, they are double jackets and instant win and have superior artwork. Look at these! It feels like they did it backwards with this anime. Yes, I'm bitter. I wish I had the other release, not this box set. So unlike Compatler V villains living on Earth and hiding for thousands of years, then they decided to emerge. In Voltus 5 we have the aliens just to invade Earth in the first scene. Kind of a step back for me, but it's the norm for robot anime, so that's okay. They are the Bozan Empire, and Prince Heinel is leading the invasion with his generals, Katarin, Zul, and Jangel. Let me state something first, I hate Jangel because he is a rehash of my least favorite character from Compatler V, Dangel. Out of all the characters they copied, they had to do this one. You can make a case for Zul, he is different from Archimedes and more of a weasel. Anyway, back to the plot. We have the Falcon headquarters training the team that will eventually pilot the giant super robot Voltus V. The base is commanded by Professor Mitsuyo and Hamaguchi. The Voltus team consists of Mitsuyo's three children, the protagonists Kinichi, Daijiro and Hiyoshi, and two other members, the cowboy Epe and the ninja Migumi. They were under heavy training for a year because the scientists anticipated the Boazan invasion. Before I continue, there is something that bothered me ever since I was a kid. It's nitpicking, I know, but I want to mention it. It was a secret base in the beginning, and I thought that's a clever idea. The evil guys always attack where the heroes are, so having it hidden is smart. Then they stopped doing that. Why? I thought it was an interesting concept. Whatever. And so we have the classic robot tale of defending Earth against the constant monster invasions every episode. Is that the story? Not really, this is just the surface. You see, the story is truly about the father of the three boys, Kintaro Go. Years ago, Professor Go went to planet Boazan to stop their future invasion, and he told his wife Mitsuyo if he didn't come back, it means he's dead. And that's what happened, so they think. So every episode, we have more hints and clues on the father's true identity goals and how they are related to the Bozan Empire, to a point where you can't skip an episode. Something new at the time. There is always plot progression, setting up future revelations, main characters dying while introducing new ones, the Voltis team keeps evolving while learning different attacks, and this is where the goal of the robot romance series shines, breaking the robot genre's rules, and concentrate on the drama. And Voltus V achieved that in spades, as the episodic formula is barely there, while in Compatler V, there are skippable episodes. To me, it's blasphemy, I can't do that as I love this format. Many episodes have a roller coaster of emotions and surprising twists. I expected a few deaths here and there, but the kill count is a lot, and there are many professor characters. Other than Go, none of them compare to Yatsuya. A misanthrope drunk, you can't beat that. Plus, every twist has a subtle, well-crafted build-up since the start, making the surprising moments more effective. Though I love the Garuda plot, there weren't any seeds planted in the earlier episodes, and that is where I realized how Voltus V had fixed all of my negatives from Compatler V. Like there is no Aspel in the end, the antagonist story keeps growing from the beginning and explodes in the end, there isn't a new villain out of nowhere, and the tone doesn't change. But the best improvement is showing the evil empire's planet. Compatler V never showed the Kempel Empire and that was a shame. Voltus V, however, has many villain-centric episodes that show the Boazan planet, its origins, the politics, and the story's climax which takes place in Boazan, something Compatler V desperately needed. Also in the previous video, I wish this story ended with the Garuda arc while expanding upon it. Voltus V did precisely that with Prince Heiner.
The main characters are a definite improvement. The Goat Brothers are so memorable because their origin story is linked to the main plot, and all are strong in their own way. A shooter, a martial artist, a future scientist, and Megumi being a badass ninja, and Epe... Well, he's good with the whip? I don't know. The team has many frictions between them, and their backstories fix their arguments, so you continuously learn more about them. Megumi's father, General Oka, is the ninja master and the head of the Earth's army. You see, there is a connection to all the characters in a way, and I love that as most of them are family, and the people of Earth are wholesome, connected, and fight together. The villains, however, are divided and never on the same page. Now that's refreshing, usually the story focuses more on how human beings fight each other while an impending doom is coming. It's the exact opposite here. The more we see the Bozan Empire's politics, you realize that Hainald is an anti-hero, as they plot against him for an unknown reason. Episode 8 triggered that storyline, which focused more on Bozan, and I thought it was awesome to have an early antagonist only episode, but that was just the beginning. Voltis 5 has many of them, and if you watch my videos, you'll know how much I love villain specific episodes. Then my care for Heinel occurred early in the story. Again, it's the Garuda buildup but done with more care and episodes. His generals though? I don't like them, and that's one of the two negatives I have in the entire show. Like I said before, Jangal is another Danga. Zul is okay and has that slimy personality with some nice episodes. Katarin is annoying and I just want her to shut up. They tried so hard to replicate the Mia storyline from Compatler V. The emotional and melancholic elements to Mia's personality is entirely absent with Katarin, resulting in a character that feels nagging and unnecessary. In my opinion. Oh, and that Mazinja Z reference in episode 24? I love it. It was hilarious and out of place. General Vargan says that his indestructible armor is made out of Mazinger? I'm not gonna lie, I geeked out. The art and character designs is the best thing in here. You know the gist by now, I dig this. The characters look more memorable than Compatler V, except for Mia, nothing tops her. Yes, they do look similar, but with enough changes that make them their own. Especially Megumi, I love her. The Bozinians are a classic, with the horns in their attire, I love the woman dresses with the veil hanging from their horns, that's an excellent tiny detail to emphasize the importance of the horns, as the story revolves around them. The still imagery is beautiful, and tons of them are here. The animation is not essential in those shows, but they feel faster and more engaging than Compatler V. The mechanical designs are also an improvement, especially with the monsters. I can't think of one monster that looked stupid and forgettable, and many episodes had more than one appears. That's like getting a surprise dessert, the more the merrier. Though I wish there were stupid ones. Like I always say when I review an episodic anime, it's part of the fun. I love the Skull Battleship way more than Garuda's as it has personality, and you know it is from Boazan from the horns and everything. Voltus 5 is Compatler V with a shaved head but it slightly wins because it has a sword. And my second negative for Voltus 5 is the music. Sadly, there were many used pieces from Compatler V, and I can live with that if they used my favorite track of all time that I wouldn't shut up about in my previous video. But they didn't, and nothing stood out. I can't hate on the opening, but I'm not super in love with it. It's iconic and stuck with me because of Suburba Tizen, not because of this anime. Oh boy, where to even begin? The mother dies in episode 2, the professor dies in episode 13, and many other deaths. Unpredictable is the perfect description for Voltus 5. Although the first sword fight of Kinichi and Heinel is exactly like Compatler V, they end in a draw, the girl who loves the villains rescues them and gets punished because their stupid honor is hurt, it's identical. But Compatler V did it better. The animation and the dramatic still shots give a lasting and unforgettable impression on me. Anyway, what I want to do is focus on Kintaro Go and Heinel as their story drives the central theme of this anime. Family and discrimination. 
The Boazal Empire has a class system. People born with horns are the standard class, but those born without them become slaves because they look down upon them as inferior beings. Then the royal family has a new child who will be the next heir to the throne. And what do you know? He is born without horns. Karma! So, the father decided to give him fake horns and live among them. The child grew up resenting the slave system and how everyone should be equal. He made it Bizarria and told her the truth and planned to re-establish the empire and free the slaves. And she agreed to be with him on his journey. The day of his coronation, a bastard son of the previous king, Zambachil, revealed the secret and thrown him into slavery. His wife died while giving birth to a boy he never saw. Eventually, he found a way to escape the planet and went to Earth and started a new family. That is Kintaro Go, one of the best revelations and origin stories in 70s anime. In the middle of the story, they confirm that he is not dead but imprisoned by Zambajin, and the constant battles of his sons trying to get their father back is tense and tear-jerking whenever they are close. Go wants to save both Earth and Boazan, a task that made him go through hell and back. In the end, I can't help but think that he is the main character. He sets the story in motion and responsible for the heroes to travel to Boazan at the end to liberate the slaves and dethrone the evil king. Then we have Prince Hainul. Throughout the anime, Zambajil sends generals and spies to execute him or make him die in battle, and you wonder what is going on. The politics and the divide are heavy in the empire, affecting Hainul in a bad way. He wants to be the hero of his planet, he is patriotic, honorable, and the people running his world aren't. That conflict emerges in the opening episodes and you slowly figure out why they want to kill Heinel until the revelation happens in the finale. The end battle and Boazan destroy the empire, Zambajil is falling, and Heinel is rushing to rescue his king regardless of what he did to him because he is honorable and wants to serve his home. The other noblemen make fun of him because the empire is losing anyway, but he insists on never giving up, and someone shoots him, but thankfully Catherine takes the shot and dies. Good, I never cared for her and her death made me happy. He pilots the Master Godor, that only activates if the pilot has a pure intention to protect Boazan. And it looks fantastic, one of the better final monsters undoubtedly. He loses the battle against Voltus V and has the iconic sword fight with Kinichi. Eventually, Kinichi breaks Heinel's sword, and he's not stopping, so he pulls out a dagger and it turns out it was Losaria's. Go figures out that he is the lost son, and the reason why Zambajil wants to kill him. And after he proves that to Heinel, he breaks down, and feels ashamed that he is fighting his flesh and blood the entire time. This is why he is good at heart, he did not resist and kept fighting for his honor because there is no honor in fighting your family. Nothing is more important than that. Then the cowardly Zambajil appears with a bomb. Heinel kills him, but the bomb explodes anyway, taking Heinel's life in the process. A beautiful and a sad scene that stands the test of time. A reminder why the Robot Romance series is all about the drama. Go was a victim of racism, and his lost son helped end the war because he realized it doesn't matter if they are hornless. After all, they are family, showing that at the end of the day, if they share the same blood, they are equal, and thus everyone should be. Useless trivia. Compatler V ended the story with Campbell starting a revolution to dethrone the evil regime, and it happened off screen, out of nowhere, at the end of the series with no build up. That's the Aspel ending I always hated. Voltus V ended the same way, with a rebellion against a dictator, but we saw it on screen with thorough development. Obviously, that is intentional. Voltus V did what every follow up should do evolve. It is the perfect step up from Compatler V as it fixed all of its issues and kept what made it a classic in the first place. To me, nothing comes close to the Garuda arc, but it only lasted for two episodes and if it was expanded throughout the series, we would have the Heil arc. Still, it doesn't have that dark, nihilistic punch of Garuda, but it defeats it in everything else. The anime gave a clear direction of what the genre should go now. One big story and shifting away from the episodic structure while keeping that old touch I always loved. Building an intriguing mystery even if it's not hard to figure out is part of my enjoyment, as the journey is a jigsaw puzzle put together. It's an easy puzzle, you can tell what it is early on, but it is such a good time. Voltus V is not a simple story between good versus evil. It's about love through family and hate through discrimination. 
and when put together, family always prevails.